Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. I'm John. Uh, I'm doing a different kind of video today. Uh, I'm doing some repair work. Um, usually I do builds and, and things like that. So this is my first time branching into this kind of video, but repairing equipment is definitely part of the farm craft. Uh, I do a lot of it, so uh, I thought I'd do some video of it and see what you guys thought. So uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, uh, let me know. Give it a thumbs down, whatever. Working on electronics while they're plugged in uh, and troubleshooting them that way is dangerous. If you don't have some understanding of what you're doing, uh, it's very easy to get yourself hurt. This is an entertainment video. Don't do anything that I do here. So what do you do when stuff breaks? Most people just throw it away and get a new one. On a farm, there is so much stuff. There's something breaking all the time. I'd, I'd spend all my money buying replacement stuff. you got to try to fix things. Uh, you know, you gain a lot from, from taking apart broken stuff. Even if you can't fix it, you learn about how it works. Uh, it's going to give you experience in, in tinkering with things so that next time you can fix it. And I also end up harvesting a lot of stuff from things that I'm not able to fix, whether it's motors or transformers or just screws and, and pieces of steel or whatever. So here I've got a dehumidifier. I hate buying dehumidifiers. You seem like they break all the time. Uh, we use it in a storage room up at the stable, so um, I'm going to rip it apart here and see if I can figure out why it's not working. I'm not going to let it hang on that, because that's just going to end up breaking the uh, board there. I'd have to unscrew that in order to, to take the wires off, but I actually want to do some testing on it now that I've got it apart, so I want to leave that as it is. So now I'm just looking at the board, I'm looking for any evidence of like uh, a burnt piece. The board really looks okay. I don't see anything obviously wrong with it, at least visually, so let's plug it in and see what happens here. I think it's this button right there. I'm just shoving a little wooden wedge in there to hold that button in. So, it's, there we go. I was about to say it should kick on because it's more human in here than I've got it set to, and it did. It kicked on. Compressor's running. Coils are getting cold. So my problem is, the blower's not running. Let me show you here. Right there, that blower, that impeller should be spinning. And it's not. These coils are getting nice and cold. So basically if the, uh, if the blower would spin, this thing would work. So I think I've got a good chance of being able to fix that, or at least finding a workaround. Five different wires go into this blower. So I've probably got a high speed, because it has two fan speeds, so I've got a high speed, a low speed, a neutral, I don't know why, what the other two would be for. So the black and white are coming from this device, and I'm not sure what that is. Yes, I am working on an electrical device while it's plugged in and running. Don't do this at home. So this looks to be a sensor of some kind, so I'm going to Google the numbers that are on it and see what I can come up with. CBB61-P. Capacitor. That makes sense. Maybe it just has a start capacitor for the, uh, for the motor. <laughs> if that's the case, this is probably what's wrong. Alright, now before I turn it off, and check that further. I want to I want to see if I can test the voltage going to the blower and see if it's getting any voltage. So I traced two of the wires back to the board and it says high low. So those are those are my voltage for the uh, for the fan. I got no voltage on those pins. First thing is to check this capacitor. Yep, 
Now when you have a capacitor, they store charge so they can shock you, so take, a, take something across the leads and, and discharge it. Alright, so I've got my meter set on ohms. I'm checking, I've checked multiple settings, but let's do 20,000 ohms. And I get absolutely nothing. So what I should get is some reading, you know, whether it's 30 ohms or 5 ohms or something, and then it should increase to an open circuit as the capacitor charges up. But um, I should get something here. I've set it on 2,000 ohms. I've got nothing. I've shorted it out numerous times to make sure it's not already charged up. Now it concerns me a little bit that I wasn't getting voltage off this board, but I'm not sure how this thing's wired. If it's if this capacitor is bad, it's possible that the the board will know that and not send voltage to it. I'm not sure about that, but I think this is going to be a cheap part. Probably worth ordering one and seeing if that fixes the problem. So it was bugging me that um, that I wasn't getting any voltage here to go to the blower. Uh, this capacitor is a, mic a 5 microfarad. It's a tiny capacitor. I'm used to testing bigger capacitors, around ones, for like uh, my, my heat pumps or something. I'm not sure that my, uh, my meter is actually effectively testing this little thing. So, um, so what I decided is why don't I just hook it back up, put voltage directly to the blower and see if it works. So this is what I came up with. In order to give a neutral to the unit, I need to plug it in. Uh, and then, in order to, um, to energize that, I'm just going to use a single lead to the hot wire on this one. And we'll plug that in. And there you go. It's blowing. So, my problem is this uh, control board is not sending voltage to my blower. So again, I'm looking for any burned areas or anything that looks damaged or overheated or cracked. It really looks okay. So I know I'm not getting voltage right here. Well, this is a relay. Let me show you how this thing's working. So when I trace the wire coming from the wall, this black wire right here, going to that post, into this relay, is the, that's the hot wire. So that's my 120 volts in. And it goes to this relay and it actually passes the 120 volts through the relay to this point right here. Let me get something I can point with. That point right there. So this right here is a 120 volt bus bar, I guess you could call it. That's our power right there. And you can see the little, uh, on the board they've even drawn the little relay switches. So the relay is supposed to take the 120 volts from there to there over to that point. So literally there's, there's only one thing between the main incoming power and voltage getting to this point right here, which is, if you look on the other side, that is the prong that I tested while it was running. That was not getting voltage. Uh, and the only thing in between is this relay. So that relay is not working. The rest of the board is powered by 12 volts. I know that because all the relays are labeled on them, uh, 12 volt relays. And that 12 volts is supplied by a transformer on the other side of the board. So when the brains of the board decides that the blower needs to turn on, it sends 12 volts to the relay, which then flips the switch and hooks the 120 volts to the fan. There's two reasons this relay wouldn't work. Either it's not getting the 12 volt signal to trigger the relay from the rest of the control board, or it's not triggering when it should and uh, delivering the 120 volt power. All right, the compressor just kicked on. So let's see if we have 12 volts here. I do not have 12 volts here. That means it's not the relay, it's the control board. I'm gonna test that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take 12 volts and I'm gonna put it across that relay. All right, so I've got a little transformer. This is 12 volts right here. And I plugged it back in so it's got power, so if I put power across these two leads to close that, to activate the solenoid, the blower comes on. Okay, so with some simple little troubleshooting, I know 
the control board is the problem. It is not sending the signal to turn the fan on. Trying to troubleshoot a circuit board like this and figure out where the problem is uh, is beyond me and um, probably not worth anyone's time. I know what needs to happen here. When it sends power through this wire right here, which goes to the compressor, it should also send power to my blower. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a single pole, single throw relay, 120 volt. So, ooh, you know what I could do? I don't even need a relay. I don't even need a relay. I can just hook those together. And that should work. Whenever the compressor is running, the blower will be running. It won't have the, the fancy delay after the compressor turns off, but I don't care about that. This should work. What I mean by that delay is a lot of times these things are wired so that when the compressor turns off, the coils of course will still be cold. The fan will keep blowing for a period of time, and then it'll turn off. Um, and the fan probably starts blowing before the compressor turns on. Um, I just need the thing to dehumidify. I, I'm not really worried about that tiny little bit of efficiency. Uh, it makes sense for me to get this thing going if I can. So I don't know what these connectors are called. It's just this tiny little uh, little kind of spade. You put two wires in it, parallel to each other, and then when you close it, it presses this spade, which acts like a kind of like a knife. It pierces the the insulation of the wires and uh, connects the two. Kind of a cool little thing. Uh, it's going to work good right here, I think. Now once we get through the delay, when the compressor kicks on, the fan should come with it. It's like waiting for water to boil. The fan is on. the frost on that. Can you see the little drips of water on there? It's working! Sorry, I've been watching too much Ave. I've got one fixed dehumidifier and I didn't have to pay anything. Didn't even need parts. And that's how you troubleshoot and fix a dehumidifier, if you're lucky. No, I mean, you can see I'm not a pro at this. Um, certainly there are people that are far more knowledgeable on electronics and, and being able to fix things, but um, I think it's, it's worthwhile in a lot of ways. One, I enjoy it. I like seeing how things work. But uh, you save yourself money. There's nothing to lose tearing into something that's broken. Uh, in fact, you know, you're only going to gain. Like, if, if I hadn't been able to fix this, I probably would have just taken some snips, cut out all the copper pipes, and saved that. All these screws that I had pulled out of it, I'd just throw in my screw drawers. Um, the metal, I would just divide out and take it to recycling, and um, basically just part out the machine in, in whatever way. If you see something in there that you might have a use for, just throw it in a drawer. But, um, and then the next time you tear into one, you're going to have a little bit more knowledge, you're going to be a little bit better uh, and you just keep doing it and you're going to end up being able to fix things. That being said, um, thanks to the lawyers out there, this is not a how-to video. Don't try this at home. But you get the point. You should get, you should get some ohms and it should change over time. So yeah, here's a good capacitor. 35 microfarads. 